Welcome back to Real Estate Happenings, your go-to podcast for all things real estate. This week, we're discussing how to best succeed at work and at home as an executive working mom. Are you guys ready? And we all need the advice we can get. This week, we'll be speaking to top producing real estate agent and my dear friend, Nikki Holman, about her journey as a mom executive and how she got where she is today. Nikki, how are you? I am good. Just running around with the kids and running around with clients. Sounds about right, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Well, I want to hear all about your story. I know you and I probably talk on the phone every day Mm -hmm. and mostly it's to make fun of our clients. I'm just kidding, clients. (laughs) But I just, you know, we we get on the phone to vent. We do. We do. We vent about work. Yes. Kids. And then a little bit of gossip, but and husbands (laughs) and husbands yes you have to vent about husbands that's for sure yes but tell me a little bit about your story I got into real estate six years ago um just I was working corporate America like so many of us starting out um out of college do and I just thought you know I can't live like this I don't want someone to tell me when to go to lunch I don't want someone to tell me uh, you know, what time I need to be there. Uh, I want to have endless amount of money that I can make and no cap. So I've always wanted to do real estate. And what inspired me when I was little was Designing Women. Do you remember that show? No. <laughs> what show it's was these that? women that were home designers and like interior decorators out of Dallas. And they had these, this big hair and these really pretty suits and drove Cadillacs. <laughs> okay. I'm going to have to go look because I have no idea what this show is. I loved that show. And I was like, I want to be them. So they weren't real estate agents, but they were in that house industry. And so I've always like thought of that as like real estate to be glamour and it's really not all glamour. But it's not anyways, glamour. I got into it and um, I absolutely love it. And, you know, the first two years are always rough and it just gave me so much flexibility. And with being a mom, oh yes, it's an awesome way to, you know, have share some of that balance with For working sure. and kids. So, so how real estate, like, did you have a sign where you woke up one day and you were besides the show? I mean, obviously that's what inspired you, but did you just say, okay, today is the day I'm getting my license? Yeah. I just said, I have two friends that I was living with the time that were in real estate and actually while I was living in Nebraska and, um, you know, I just, (laughs) I can't even say it. (laughs) Nebraska. Why did I know this? I lived in Nebraska for a year because I competed for Miss Nebraska USA. I wanted to be Miss USA first, then real estate agent. (laughs) Okay. And we're going to get about pageant life in a minute too. So they were both real estate agents and um, they were just always busy and multitasking. And it's like every day was different and I really wanted to do it. And so I go, well, I'm going to move back to Texas. I'm not going to do real estate in Nebraska. I mean, it's a great place to live and raise your family. But I was, I was done with the cold and I came back to Texas and I just put my head down got my license, and then just started with any client I could take. Awesome. Well, that's amazing, and thank you so much for sharing. I've gotten so many questions about work-life balance and what tools I use and how I'm able to manage the work-life balance. So let's just dive in and get started on what, how you manage work-life, work-life balance and how I've done it as well. You were a Texans cheerleader. How did this experience translate to your real estate career today? So with Texans, we had to be in front of the media and, um, you know, I was on the local TV channels or on radio or, you know, photo shoots and whatnot. It really, you're you're not scared to talk to anyone. You just got to go out there and be yourself and um, sometimes read scripts and make your own kind of lines. And you're, you're, it's an unpredictable schedule and that's kind of transposed into real estate. Not only I did pageants for 10 years of my life, um, you know, with pageants, oh, there's only one winner. There's only one crown and you could be a runner up, but you're not the winner. And so that, that was many years of being told no, 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 no. And a lot of times with real estate deals fall through, clients fall through, people change their mind. Um, people tell you, no, they don't want to work with you and you have to persevere through all of that. And so I think with Texans and with pageantry is help me prepare and have like tough skin. I didn't realize how much pageants and even, you know, working with the Texans, you had to deal with so much of being in front of the public eye and yeah. getting those no's. And fake it till you make it, too. If you're having a bad day. You have to smile. 
put it on, put on a smile and turn on and so you can get that deal done. For sure. Tell me a little bit about your beautiful kids. What ages are they? And I say so, beautiful because I know them. <laughs> I have little Gabby who's 20 months old. I think she's going through the early uh, terrible twos. Wow. So we're dealing with that, but she is a doll. Um, and I've got a six-month-old who has been sleeping through the night since he was probably eight weeks because you told me, give him the rice give him and the, the formula at night. And that is my it secret. Works. It worked with both kids. But, yeah, they're close together. Um, and But it's fun because they're finally getting to, like, interact with each other because he's getting more of his personality. And they're just adorable. They're fun. But it's just a ton of work. And can we talk about how you have been pregnant for the past two years while being a top producer? While being a top producer. And with that, what advice would you share to soon to be moms that are working? I would look into childcare now because there's a ton of places, especially in town, that are waitlisted until next summer. And so if you want to get into a school that, you know, is some more of like of a prep academy you know, be prepared for a wait list or those mom's days out, those spots rarely come open. So start looking now, enjoy and take off time from work as long as your company will allow it or as long as you can, because it, I mean, you know, it goes by so fast. It really does go by fast. And then it's like, they're not a newborn and they don't even look like a newborn. They're like full blown toddler. So my just kids take are 11. Time. Well, Camila's turning 11. My son is 12. And I just feel like I closed my eyes and now they're 11 and 12. Yeah, it it's goes by so, so sad. It is sad. I'll take babies, though, that can't <laughs> ask for iPhones and Apple Watches and everything I'm else sure. that comes with it. So how do you create this balance between work and home life? Well, I know you've taught me calendar integrity. And so if you're not someone that's regimented, I mean, I, I hate to tell you this, but you've got to block out like every part of your day, even if it's like, I'm going to go get my nails done, add it to your calendar, or I'm going to go to the grocery store and pick up these items, add it to your calendar, because if it's on your calendar, we're not going to do it. Right. So that's the biggest thing. Um, with managing and balancing your schedule, um, and if you're not regimented, just, you know, kids like schedules, and so you just got to be on a schedule. So everything goes in your calendar, nails, hair, everything, facial, personal items, um, even like, like we got to share calendars with our husbands because sometimes they don't remember <laughs> what we're doing that weekend oh, that's a whole nother <laughs> or your I partner, Jose. <laughs> you know, I'm going to speak for my husband in my situation. He'll say, oh, you know, they invited us to this party. And I said, yes, or gathering. Yeah. And I'll tell him, okay, what day is it? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. What time does this start? Add I it to know. the calendar. <laughs> yeah. He, men, I mean, not all men, but, no, you know. In general. In general, for sure. Jose, yeah. okay, we won't talk about him. <laughs> hey, Tyler's done the same thing. <laughs> he, Jose says yes to everyone. Yes, we'll be there. Of yeah. course, I'd love to come. And yeah. I'm like, did you look at our calendar? And yeah. he's like, no. Exactly. It's got to be in the calendar. That's his number one rule. For sure. So being in the real estate industry, what type of perks do you feel like you get as a working mom? Because everybody says to me, at least, oh, your schedule's so flexible. You get to work whenever you want, which is not true, by the way, when you're no. in real estate. No. I mean, you could dictate your schedule to a certain extent, but, you know, if your buyer's only available after work hours, I mean, you kind of have to bend at that. So, right. um, I mean, I'd say the perks with pregnancy is a lot of people are very nice to you and they want to give you business <laughs> and um, you kind of feel treated like a princess. That's hilarious. But um, they, I, I would say if you're pregnant, be ready for your business to grow if you're in sales because people just are like, oh, she's pregnant and look, she's working so hard. Like, let's give her the business. So and that's how you became a top producer, yes. <laughs> by staying pregnant. Now we know the trick, guys. Um, but also, you know, when you have the kids, you feel like you join like this uh, mom's club with like universal anyone. And so even when I'm at the park with Gabby and Corbin, I'm talking to another mom. She may be a working mom and we can kind of share some stories and it's, 
it's like uh, kind of like invigorating, you know, you're a working mom too and you're keeping a balanced schedule and you've got kids in school and you're dropping them off at soccer and all. I mean, you do that all the time, tennis camp and you kind of enter this mom's club and, you know, I think people trust you more and they want to give you their business. So, I mean, if you're a mom, you're joined a club and just be ready for your business to grow. For I sure. wouldn't say there's a ton of perks with the flexibility of a schedule. We get to control that. But I think the most perks is like you're going to have a lot of business, but maybe this is your opportunity to to um, add more people to your team or add, you know, an extra assistant or something. So which starting a team was something that you did here. Yes. And my goodness, you have grown so much. I have. I have grown slowly, which is fine. It's like it's not a race. You just got to keep your pace going. But I have expanded my team a little bit and um, got some good people on there. You are being so modest. Nikki is a badass, <laughs> a top producer, and is killing it. So she's being so modest. But tell me a little bit about, you know, we all go through this. I know that I personally did, but working moms, how to prevent burnout. I know you and I have had so many conversations about this, but what are some ways that you feel like, okay, this is what I do to prevent a burnout? And what does that look like? Well, I, we have some really nice spas here in Houston. <laughs> hey, Chellis man. being one of them and Fiore and Post Oak and I know that my husband encouraged me to go. I mean, not, you're not going to be going every week, but if you can like make time to do, you know, a half a day there and bl again, block it out in your schedule. And some of those places feel like you're not in Houston anymore. And that can be the, a great reset for you to start the weekend off or start your, you know, Monday off right. And then venting to other moms, other working yes. moms, even if it's just like for 20 minutes, they get you. And sometimes that really makes me feel a lot better. And that can kind of like, help me get back into it. Um, but I'd say, you know, have a group of moms, whether it's, you know, on social media or people you meet in your neighborhood and vent. You have to vent. Yeah. But also finding out you're out. Yeah. For me, so for you, spas, going mm -hmm. to a going spa, to massage, yes. I have a list of things that I do, but one of my favorite is acupuncture. Yes. I do acupuncture at least once a week. I have to, I can't live without it. I do do massages. I probably get two a month. And, you know, I get people asking me, but how do you find the time for all this? If you're working and then with put the it kids, in your schedule. you have to. You have to put it in your schedule because, you know, my husband loves to remind me of this. Happy wife, happy life. Yeah. So it's very important that you. Well, you and you can't take out. care of your, you know, your job and others in your family if you don't put yourself first because if you're not healthy, then the rest of the family is going to suffer. For sure. And your job. Agreed. What has been one of your biggest challenges as a working mom and how did you overcome it? The mom guilt, which I, I don't think is ever going to go away. No. Because you, you feel guilty leaving them at school. You feel guilty living with them, the nanny all day. You feel guilty that you're not taking them to the zoo on a Friday afternoon. Right. Maybe, or Friday morning because it's too right. hot to, to be out in the afternoon. I don't think that really goes away, but I always remind myself that we're setting a good example for our sons and daughters to see that, you know, mom is working hard. She's excelling in her goals and she's, you know, still has that drive and energy. And I think that's a good example, whether it's for your daughter or your son that you're setting. And that's kind of what I remind myself that I'm doing it for a purpose and they're my why, you know, mm -hmm. I've, sure your family is a part of your why too. For sure. No, it's very important. I always say that. I want my daughter to see that mommy works mm -hmm. and for my son as well. So he sees, you know, women as an equal yeah. at all times. And then she understands what she should expect to be treated at as whenever she does become a working mom. Yeah. You know, it's just setting that example. But mom guilt is hard. Yes. And I think kids don't even remember. You know, when I started no. my business, my kids were little and I even asked them, do you guys remember me working late? And they're like, no. Playing in the office with yes. all the toys. They're <laughs> like, we remember playing in the office and you yeah. making pancakes and we were at the office on Saturdays and Sundays. But it's funny how they process and yeah. how we do it. Yeah, exactly. We're so hard on ourselves. What is your secret weapon as a working mom? Is it Tyler? <laughs> Tyler's her husband, by the way. Tyler does help, but I would say meditation. And oh yes, if you even if you can do it for ten minutes. Um, and sometimes I show up to an appointment early, and I'll just put on some good like 
spiritual music that or what is it those what are the song thing i think you did that the little tibetan like song sound healing um yes the sound healing yeah. i was just telling let's see so that we have to go to sound meditation it is the best thing i took my son to it and we love it yeah i they have them all around houston now or they're starting to have them and they have like a little soundtrack of it on spotify and so i'll just turn that on for like 10 minutes for an appointment and then i just speak things of like gratitude and thankfulness and that my day's gonna be positive if it's the morning my day's gonna be positive and it's like it honestly can change my whole mood in 10 minutes that's awesome. So that's my kind of secret weapon. If I'm having an off day or um, I have 10 minutes in the morning to spare, I'll definitely meditate and try to set the intent for my day. You have to just find those, you know, secret weapons. I meditate every day for 30 minutes and I have a playlist on yeah. Spotify as well. But I also for whenever I'm going to an appointment, since you talked about going to an appointment, I always, whenever, if I'm really stressed out or I feel like, okay, am I prepared? Did I get everything I needed? Yeah. I listen to rap music. <laughs> I really do. I put on really There's loud. There's probably a lot of people that can side with you on that. <laughs> I put on really loud rap music and I just feel like it's game time, yeah. you know? And I imagine myself like a football player right yeah. before they walk out yeah. and how they start, you know, like kind of like. Uh -huh. Hiding themselves. Yeah. So that's what I do. Yeah, too. like let me slap the tape. <laughs> it works. You know, you got have, this. We have to figure out what works. Why do you think moms make the best realtors? Oh my gosh. We multitask like crazy. Oh, yes. We and we're juggling. I mean, that's why it's easy to juggle 10, 15 people at any point at any moment in time because you're juggling dinner and kids and the phone and everything else in between cleaning and, um, and you know, we're patient. Um, women are more patient. I'd say that's why there's a lot more women realtors. Um, you have to have patience with your clients and having kids teaches, teaches us that a lot of times with the kids, it's unpredictable and that and not one day is the same in real estate. One day you're closing the next day it falls through for whatever reason buyer backs out or, you know, someone's mad because they didn't leave the chandelier and then you're oh writing a check goodness. for a chandelier. Yes. So, I mean, kids, kids offer that um, luxury of unpredictable. So what has been the most unpredictable situation you have been in with the kids? Something crazy that you were just like, what is happening right now? Well, recently, um, uh, Corbin had a blowout. Oh my God. I didn't have another set of clothes. And then, and then Gabby threw up, I guess she was car sick. All in the car. All in, all in the car. By yourself. By myself. Oh, my God. So, Corbin, I was just like, buddy, you're going to have to go in the car seat in your diaper and just put, like, a little cloth down. And then I had to change of clothes for Gabby, but I was just cleaning with the Lysol wipes. Corbin is such a good little boy, so he was just like, okay, He's mom, whatever. Sweetest. Gabby was a little bit freaking because she had thrown up. On, I'm, I don't know if it was my driving or what, but she just... It's just crazy. <laughs> Whenever you stop and think of those things, those blowouts are the worst. I remember one time waking up at three in the morning. I was sick. Mm -hmm. So I ran to the bathroom mm -hmm. and I was super sick. It must have been something I ate. Yeah. And then I turn around and Manny and Camila were little. Camila had a blowout. Mm -hmm. And I guess I woke her up mm -hmm. and Manny was throwing up on the dogs. <laughs> And then I turn around and I look at Jose and he's just like, had this look on his face. He's like, I can't take this anymore <laughs> all at three in the morning. But, you know, we laugh now, but as you're going through it, you're I just know. like, how do I do all of this? I know. And then it's like, you're sweating. It's hot. It's God, God bless us. Yes. Okay. So what's next, Nikki? Do you have any career goals that you're looking to achieve? Family goals? Is there more? Beautiful babies. <laughs> I love the babies. I would like to say yes, but I'm undecided right now. Let me take a one-year break at least. You need it. I think I need it. I'm looking to grow my team this year, and um, I've got a really amazing partner in crime who does a lot of the – Ashley, who does a lot of the back end of my business, 
And with our growth, like I'm hoping to promote her too. She deserves it. She has a lot of great things for me and our clients. Tyler and I, my husband and I are um, investing in our first real estate, real estate development deal this year. Wow. And then I've got three developments coming up. One of them I'm co-listing with Luann. It's an awesome. acreage and broker, uh, Brookshire. And then I've got um, some homes coming in Dickinson and then another set of townhomes coming in Shady Acres this year. So. You're a busy. Lot. Yes, very busy. And we're trying to plan a year, uh, trip to Europe and take both kids next year. Oh, my goodness. That sounds like a lot. But <laughs> well, you can do it. If I can do it. can, you can. I want to get back to Europe. I want to take the kids. And so we're going to explore that. Well, Nikki, this was a lot of fun. Thank you so much for sharing. I don't think I've laughed that much on a podcast. I love all my guests, but that was... We obviously talk a lot on the phone, so just to be able to tell our stories yeah. out loud makes it even better. Well, and um, my day's now better now that we had a good laugh session. Oh, mine too. I was sweating earlier, <laughs> but we won't get into that. Thank you so much for being here. And everyone, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to follow us on our social media channels below.